Hi everyone, my name's Dabudor, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Sword of Night and Flame easily. I'll also show you how to get it up to plus 10 along the way. The Sword of Night and Flame is a hybrid intelligence and faith weapon. Its melee attacks do three different types of damage in the form of physical, magic, and fire all at once. That actually provides a disadvantage to this weapon because its split damage gets reduced three times as a result. However, where this weapon really shines is with its Ash of War, which does exclusively magic or fire damage depending on which button you press, and these are extremely strong. This guide is designed for beginners, but more experienced players may also learn something along the way. Feel free to use the timestamps to skip around the video and find the parts that are relevant to you. To start off, we're going to go to the Church of LA in Limgrave and talk to Kale, where we're going to purchase his three cracked pots as well as the crafting kit and a bunch of throwing daggers. We're also going to head directly north of the church, where we're going to find the Groveside Cave. Inside the Groveside Cave are a bunch of wolves, so be careful of them. But there's also a cracked pot, which we're going to need later to fight the Godskin Noble. After that, we're going to head north to the Gatefront Ruins, where we're going to talk to Melina and get the Spectral Steed Vessel for Torrent. We're also going to grab the Map of Limgrave. And in the cellar of the ruins, we're going to grab the Stormstomp Ash of War and the Whetstone Knife which will allow us to put Ashes of War on our weapons. Now that we have the map, here's a quick overview of where we've been. So that was the Gatefront, here's Groveside Cave, and just to the south of it is the Church of LA. Up next, we're going to follow the road to the west from the Gatefront, where we're going to go to the Stormhill Shack. We're also going to stop by a bunch of points of interest along the way. We need to be able to kill the Godskin Noble at the Volcano Manor in order to get the Sword of Night and Flame up to plus 10. So we're going to pick up a bunch of supplies that are going to help us do that along the way. Along the road towards the Stormhill Shack, you'll find a Golden Seed, so make sure you grab that. Instead of going straight to the Stormhill Shack, we're going to go to the east over here, where there's a circle of chairs with three smithing stone ones. Then, at the Stormhill Shack, we're going to grab the Sight of Grace and a Stone Sword Key. We're going to need two Stone Sword Keys by the end of this run. We're also going to head to the hill to the northeast of the Stormhill Shack, where we're going to grab the Strength Knot Crystal Tier. You can get away from the Troll faster by following the cliff to the north and dropping down where it's safe. Then we're heading over to the War Master Shack in the clearing in the woods. Here's a quick recap of the path we just took. So that was where the Strength Tier was. We went up to the north and then just followed it around and to the south to the War Master Shack. In the Warmaster Shack, you'll find Bernal. You can buy Ashes of War from him, but we don't actually need any of his Ashes of War for this guide. Right next to the Site of Grace, you'll find three Root Resins by a couple trees over here. You can farm Root Resin by grabbing them, then resting at the Site of Grace so they respawn, and then grabbing more Root Resin. I suggest you stock up on a bunch of them because we're going to need them to craft Blood Grease later on. After that, we're going to go up the hill to the northeast, where we're going to find this knight on a horse. If you kill him, he will drop the Golden Vow Ash of War, which is a really solid buff that you can put on any weapon. So that'll help us with the Godskin Noble later on. While we're here, we're also going to climb up the nearby ruin, where there's a scarab that will drop a Somberstone 1, which we'll use to upgrade the Sword of Night and Flame when we get it. After that, we're going to go back to the Warmaster Shack and head to the south of it to the Troll Zone. We're going to get a troll to break a statue for us right about here. Then we're going to head straight to the south of the statue where there's a ruin we can jump down to to safely get down to a lower level where the trolls can't get us. Then follow the cliff to the northeast where there's a smithing stone on the little ledge over there. And then just south of that ledge, there's a spirit spring which we can use to get back up on top of the cliff where we'll head north to the death-touched catacombs. So in the middle of this big open field is a statue. We can't break the statue, but a troll can. So you have to lure one over, get him to hit it, and it'll break. Inside, there's a bunch of smithing stone ones and a smithing stone two. Jump down to the ruin, like we said. Then follow the cliff to the east. Go past the spirit spring. We're going to come back here in a second. Grab this smithing stone one. Then head back to the spirit spring. Jump up back on top of the cliff and head directly north. The trolls each drop a thousand runes on death, so if you can handle them, then this is a decent place to farm some runes at the very start of the game. We're going to need runes to level up so we can actually meet the Sword of Night and Flame's high requirements, but I didn't bother to kill the trolls here because there's a better farm that we're going to do in a little bit. Before we go to the Death Touch Catacombs, I decided to stop by the Saint's Bridge side of Grace because we're going to come back here in a minute, and there's also Alexander, the Warrior Jar, uh, on a cliff just to the south of the Saint's Bridge. If you talk to him and get him unstuck, then he'll give you an exalted flesh and he'll move to another spot for his quest. 
So this is going to be really controversial, and so that's why I'm labeling this as optional, but I strongly recommend you kill Alexander here, because he drops the Warrior Jar Shard on death, which will increase your Ash of War damage by 10%. So if you finish his quest, then you get Shard of Alexander instead, which gives you 15% bonus Ash of War damage, but you're not going to get that until much later in the game, like near the end of it. So if this is your first playthrough, I kind of suggest you just kill him and use this talisman now, because the 10% for your entire playthrough is going to be more useful to you than 15% for the last few hours of your playthrough. And since the main reason to use the Sword of Night and Flame is for its Ash of War, then that extra Ash of War damage is really nice to have for your entire playthrough. But if you don't want to kill Alex, that's entirely up to you, and I totally understand. Anyway, we went to the Death Touch Catacombs and we grabbed the Uchi Katana from the secret area, uh, which we're going to use to kill the Godskin Noble later on. After that, we're going to keep following the road to the east across the bridge. On the bridge, there's a pumpkin head you can run past, and there's a few Smithing Stone ones to pick up. Then just on the other side of the bridge, there's a merchant who sells three Smithing Stone ones and a Cracked Pot. Make sure you grab the Cracked Pot, we're going to need that for the Noble later on. And if you don't have 12 Smithing Stone ones, then you should buy some of them from him too. After that, we're going to head southeast towards the tree in the Mistwood. So if you follow this cliff that's just behind where the merchant was, you'll see that pond with a couple bears in it. You'll see the ruin on your left. If you keep heading south, you'll come across the artist shack. So this shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, here it is on the map. I, I don't have the map of the area yet, but you can see that's where the merchant was. It's just to the southeast of it, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. There's another smithing stone one here that I didn't grab, but you can if you want it. And then if you head to the east, there's a cliff. Follow the cliff to the north. You'll come to a lower area where you can drop down safely. And then there's a graveyard here that has a bunch of golden runes, so grab those because we're going to need runes. And then there's also the crafting recipe for the sleep pots, which we're going to use against the Godskin Noble at the Volcano Manor. Then from the graveyard, keep heading north. You'll see these tombstones, which you can use to safely jump down to the stream. And then there's a bunch of wolves and a giant bear fighting. Be careful not to get caught in the crossfire. Grab the smithing stone too, and grab the Trina Zillies by the little waterfall. Then run away, follow the stream to the east, where we're going to head over to the Third Church of America, where we're going to pick up the Flask of Wondrous Physic and a Sacred Tear, which we're going to use to upgrade our uh, healing flasks. Make sure you grab the Set of Grace at the Third Church of America, and then we're going to follow the road to the south, where we're going to grab the map of East Limgrave. We're also going to stop by the Minor Erd Tree to pick up a couple Crystal Tears for the Wondrous Physic, and then we're going to head further south to Fort Height, on the southeast end of the Mistwood. So you shouldn't have trouble finding the Erd Tree. It's a giant tree. At the base of it, there's a little bowl that has a couple Crystal Tears in it, so we want that Spiked Crack Tear. And then just to the west of it, there's the map. So grab that bad boy. And then if you keep following the road to the south, it takes you to Fort Height. And there's a set of grace right over here by the cliff. But first, we're actually going to stop by the Mistwood Ruins, which are located on the road just to the south of the map where we're going to grab a few more Trina's Lilies. So there's a giant sleeping bear here. You can grab the lilies and then run away before it finishes waking up and murders you. After that, just follow the road south to Fort Height, grab the Sight of Grace outside, follow the road up to the fort, grab the golden seed that's outside of it. Then we're going to head inside. There's a few blood roses we're going to grab. We're going to farm more of these later on, but it's nice to grab these here for the rune farm that we're going to do in a little bit. Then we're going to go in this little room with the rats. Be careful not to get owned by them and grab the cookbook, which gives us the crafting recipe for blood grease. And then at the top of Fort Height is a tower, which we need to climb up. Try not to get murdered by that knight who left me with literally like five health. But uh, yeah, if you kill him, he drops an Ash of War, but uh, we don't need it for this guide. At the top of the tower, there's a chest with the Dectus Medallion, so grab that because we're going to need it. Then don't get owned by the knight, and we're going to head back over to the Third Church of America. Just to the northeast of it is the little pond, and that has a teleporter hidden in some bushes, which will take us to the Bestial Sanctum and the Dragon Barrow. The Dragon Barrow is a pretty high level area, so be careful not to get murdered by the enemies like that giant Black Blade Kindred right behind us. So you'll see if we're pretty far from where we came from, we're going to head directly to the south from the Dragon Barrow toward Fort Faroth. So if you look over, you can see the Erd Tree of the Dragon Barrow. That's what we're heading toward. Steer clear of the Black Blade Kindred so it doesn't kill you, and then follow the road directly to the south. Along the way, there's a Golden Seed, and at the giant bridge, there's a site of grace you should grab, because we need to go past this dragon. You can just run past him. He almost never hits you if you just sprint past him real fast.
But uh, if you die, then you respawn at that side of Grace anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Then we're going to go past the Minor Erd Tree, go around behind it, and jump up the Spirit Spring onto the cliff. And you will be able to see Fort Faroth is right ahead of us, so that's where we're going. Make sure you grab the Grace outside of Fort Faroth, because we're going to be coming back here later. Then head inside, just run past all the bats. If they hit you, you'll probably die. But if you just sprint past them as fast as possible, then they don't have enough time to aggro and actually attack you. At the top of the ladder, we're going to grab the Dectus Medallion. Then we're going to head further inside Fort Faroth, so go to the furthest hole from where you drop down. Be careful of that rat, because it will one-shot you. Grab the Golden Rune, and then jump across to this semi-secret area here. Be careful of the even bigger rat that'll definitely one-shot you. Drop down and grab Radagon's Sword Seal. I recommend you make sure you don't have any runes before you come in here because you're probably going to die trying to get past the rats. Um, I just used a Memory of Grace to get out faster. So Radagon's Sword Seal increases our physical stats by 5, which is important because the Uchi Katana has a 15 dex requirement and 11 strength requirement. So uh, that helps us not have to level up as much if you don't meet those requirements. While we're in the area, we're going to stop by Grail, and we're going to do some rune farming. So if you use the Uchi Katana, which has built-in bleed, and you put blood grease on it, that adds an additional 30 bleed buildup to it. So I think you're doing like 75 bleed buildup on hit. And so Grail has an enormous health pool, but if you proc bleeds on her, then it takes off a big chunk of her health all at once. So you can use blood grease on the Uchi Katana to kill Grail. On death, she drops 50,000 runes. And I have a whole video explaining this, but if you kill her and then run back to the Grace and rest at it before she finishes dying, then she will respawn. So you can kill her as many times as you want and get 50,000 runes each time. Normally, when you kill her, she stays dead forever and doesn't respawn. But that glitch allows her to respawn. So I put my points into Intelligence and Faith so I could hit the 24 Int and 24 Faith requirement for the Sword of Night and Flame. Um, I recommend you put it into Vigor instead and then worry about leveling those up later uh, because we're going to need the Vigor for the Godskin Noble fight as you're going to see. Anyway, now that we have both halves of the Dectus Medallion, we're going to head up to the Urnia. So from the Stormhill Shack, if you follow the road to the north, there's a broken bridge. You can jump off the west side of it to a little cliff and follow a path around Stormvale Castle that'll lead you up to the Urnia. So here's the bridge, jump off of it at the end, and then just go to the left, and you can follow this path all the way around, and it takes you up into the Urnia. Grab the lake-facing cliff side of Grace. We're gonna head to the west and follow the path into the Urnia. That'll take us up to a merchant and then the map. While we're here by the lake-facing cliffs, we're gonna stop by the Church of Irith, and we're gonna grab another sacred tier to upgrade our flasks. And then after that, just head to the west and follow the path down. You'll go through a soldier camp, but uh, they're easy to just run past. At the base of that hill, there's a site of grace and a merchant next to it. So from him, we're going to buy a lantern and we're going to buy three smithing stone twos. So the lantern is 1800 and the smithing stone twos are 400 each. So you're going to need a total of 3000 runes for this. After that, directly to the north of us is the map. So we're going to go grab that. When you come across it, you'll see there's these three wraith colors in front of it. Lead them away from it, because if you try to just run past them and grab the map, they do a lot of damage and they'll stun lock you, uh, and they'll knock you off the horse and kill you. So lead them away before you grab the map. Keep following the sunken road, and there's another site of grace, and, uh, sometimes when you rest at the grace, their projectiles will still come at you, so, uh, don't get hit by those. There's a bunch of things we need to grab in Lyurnia, so the first thing we're gonna do is get all of the maps so we can see the entirety of Lyurnia, and then we'll worry about grabbing stuff. So if you see the broken bridge on the right there, just to the west of it, there's the Academy Gate Town site of Grace and the map for Central Lyurnia. So that's where we're going first. Along the way, you're going to run past this gazebo with a bunch of lobsters, so don't get murdered by the lobsters. But here's the map, and I'll show it in a second. So here's where I was relative to that bridge. Here's where the Laskar ruins were, and then the merchant. From the Academy Gate Town, we're going to head directly to the north to this gazebo on the lake. This is a teleporter that will take us to the next map. We're going to head straight to that, but we're also going to grab a couple things off to the side real quick while we're in the area. So instead of going into the teleporter, what we're going to do is head to the east, where you'll see there's a gazebo hidden among the trees. And then you'll see there's these big rock formations that come out at like a 45 degree angle uh, from the cliff there. So go to the tip of one of those rocks, and then halfway between the two tips... If you put a marker there, then there's another item we're going to grab at that marker. 
So here's the gazebo. It's got a bunch of poisonous Miranda flowers around it, but don't worry about them. Uh, just grab the smithing stones and then run away. And then once you head to that other marker we placed, you'll see there's a Miranda flower with a couple chairs next to it, and there's some more smithing stone threes. And then we're going to go back to the teleporter, and we're going to take that to the map. Now that we have the full map of Lyurnia, we can start grabbing the other items and stuff that we need in the area. So first of all, you'll see we've taken a pretty significant shortcut, so that just saved us a bunch of walking. Uh, right next to us, there's a site of Grace, just to the southwest. And then what we're also going to do is come down to the lake, where we're going to pop a bunch of balloons that are going to give us runes. And also down here... There is a graveyard that has a bunch of golden runes. There are also a couple gazebos we're going to stop by that aren't marked on the map for some reason, uh, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. These balloons are the reason why we bought the throwing daggers from Kale, so you can throw the daggers at the balloons and it'll instantly pop them. They give you a golden rune 6, um, which I think is worth 3,800 runes, but the balloons don't respawn, so you only get those golden runes from them once. There's also that unmarked graveyard that has a bunch of golden runes in it. Uh, just be careful of the wraith callers. So there's the island in the middle of the lake uh, where you can grab the sorcerer's isle site of grace. Just to the south of the island, there's a gazebo that's not marked on the map. And then among these trees, there's another hidden gazebo um, that I'll show you a more precise marker placement for uh, once we get to it. But yeah, so this first gazebo is surrounded by a bunch of lobsters, so be careful not to get owned by them. But that gives us a couple smithing stone twos. And then we're going to head into the woods. There's actually a site of grace at the south end of these woods, but I didn't bother to grab it because I'm not coming back here. But you're going to want to do that while you're here. Um, but yeah, so you saw uh, I'm right next to the gazebo right now. So you might be able to like count the trees or something, but I mean, the woods aren't that big. So it shouldn't be too hard to find this thing. And inside it, there are a few smithing stone threes, which we're going to use for the Uchi Katana later. After that, we're going back to the site of grace that was by the West Lyurnia map. And we're going to follow the road north through the King's Realm ruins. At the end of the King's Realm Ruins is this big wall. If you hit it, it disappears. So do that, and then there's a Sight of Grace on the other side of it. We'll come back and talk to E.G. the Troll here later on. But first, we want to go up to Caria Manor, where we're going to actually get the Sword of Night and Flame. So the road is guarded by these magic arrows that rain down from the sky. Um, they don't do that much damage, and they're super easy to dodge. I didn't even have to dodge. They missed me the entire time there. Um, so you shouldn't have too much trouble getting past those. So here's where we came from. Like I said, we're going to go back to the Road to the Manor site of Grace and talk to E.G. in a little bit. But first, we're going through Caria Manor. So the bottom level of Caria Manor is filled with these giant hands that are all over the place, and they're obnoxious as hell. If you have to fight them, then they're really weak to fire, but I just always run past them. You can just follow the path to the northwest, and that takes you up here. Just be careful of the ones with the rings that shoot a magic spell at you. Um, but yeah, so follow the road to the northwest, that takes you up to this little chapel thing. There's a smithing stone four that you can grab here. I ended up not getting any more of them, but I'll uh, point out a spot where you can get more if you want to upgrade the Uji Katana to plus 12. Uh, but yeah, so from the manor lower level set of grace that we just grabbed inside the chapel, we're going to follow the big wall that we're walking on top of, and we're going to make a left and drop down onto a building uh, that's underneath this wall. So you see here, just make the first left, then you're going to jump down onto this roof over here you don't take fall damage from it and then you're going to jump down to the lower part of the roof i remember in my first playthrough i made the mistake of jumping into the hole and i died and had to run all the way back here so don't do that instead jump to the roof and then drop down the hole and inside this room there's a chest that has the sword of night and flame this sword has really high stat requirements in the form of 12 strength 12 dex and then 24 int and 24 faith like I said when we did the Grail farm, I recommend you put your points into Vigor first and then worry about leveling up for the Sword of Night and Flame at the end of this guide. Anyway, so we want to upgrade the Sword of Night and Flame, so I came back to EG at the Road to the Manor, Site of Grace. He sells infinite Somberstone 1s and 2s, and he sells 3 each of Somberstone 3s and 4s. So we already picked up a 1, so we're going to need a 2, a 3, and a 4. I think it cost me 1300 runes, I believe. Uh... I can't see the numbers right now, but yeah, it's something like 1300 runes. And then to upgrade the sword to plus four, I think it was another like 3000 or so. Even though I suggested you put points into vigor instead of using this sword, if you do use it this early on, it'll still be pretty strong at plus four. 
Now that we have all the maps and the sword, we're going to head back down to the lower parts of the Urnia, where we're going to tie up a few loose ends and grab a couple items. There are like eight or nine points of interest we're going to, so uh, I'm going to show them all on the map here, uh, and then I'll talk about them as we go along. Um, there's also one that I marked that I ended up not going to, um, so that's the main thing I'm going to talk about here. But so there's those first four points, the Scenic Isle, the Boil Prawn Shack, the Folly on the Lake, and the uh, Fallen Ruins of the Lake. So those are all places we need to go to talk to people and get items. In addition, there's also a few gazebos around here, so that one has smithing stone threes. This is the place I was talking about where I ended up not going. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. There's another gazebo here with smithing stone twos, and then we're going to head over to the uh, Rose Church on the west island there, uh, to the west of waypoint number four. The first place we're going to go to, which I didn't show the run over to, um, this is the Scenic Isle, which is to the west of that gazebo that has a telescope next to it. Um... So that's a set of grades we're going to use to come back and talk to Raya uh, after we do part of her quest. So she wants us to retrieve a necklace that was stolen by the guy over at the Boil Prawn Shack. So we talk to her, then we go talk to him. There's another set of grace here, make sure you grab it. Talk to him and he'll sell you the necklace for a thousand runes. You also have the option to kill him and he drops his uh, weapons, which are the iron balls. Um, they're fists and they're super strong. Um... I don't recommend killing him because he dies later on anyway, and he also sells you um, an item called Boiled Crab, which is really useful. And unlike the Shard of Alexander, you actually get that not super late into the game, so I don't recommend killing him. Anyway, we're not going to go back to Raya just yet because we still have some more stuff to grab over here. To the southwest of the Boil Prawn Shack is the island. That has the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear on it, which when you put it in your Physic, can increase your dex by 10 for 3 minutes. The Uchigatana gets a C in dex scaling, so that would be helpful for increasing its damage, but I ended up not using it and not really needing it. Next to the Boil Prawn Shack, there's a few Trina's Lilies, make sure you grab those, and then head west to this gazebo over here. So, it's guarded by a bunch of lobsters, so grab the smithing stone and then fucking dip. Um, there's the Folly on the Lake side of Grace that you can see I'm heading towards the waypoint for, so that's like the escape plan here. Um, you're going to see um, it almost didn't work out for me, but I got lucky enough not to die there this time, um, unlike the last video that I did. So, yeah. But we're heading to the Folly on the Lake side of Grace. We're coming here because we need to farm mushrooms because we're going to use sleep pots to kill the Godskin Noble later on. And the sleep pots are crafted with a mushroom and Trina's Lilies. So if you can grab both of those over here. So if you want to farm mushrooms from the gazebo, head north. There's two over here by this tree. And then if you go around the corner to the northwest, there's four more under a big-ass rock. And then you can head back to the gazebo, rest at the grace, and all the mushrooms respawn. And that's the best place in the entire game to farm mushrooms. After that, we're going to head to the southwest underneath the gigantic peninsula thing. There's a tree just to the south of the gazebo, and that has a few more smithing stone twos. So we now have the 12 smithing stone twos that we need. And then if you head around the corner here, uh, you'll see there's a whole bunch of Trina's Lilies. These things don't respawn, so be conservative with them because they're a pain in the ass to farm. Um, but this is a good spot to grab a bunch of them. I recommend not using them on pretty much anything other than Godskin enemies. Um, so that's why we're grabbing them for the Godskin Noble. After that, we headed up to the Fallen Ruins of the Lake, which is to the north of that uh, gazebo with the lobsters that almost fucking sniped me. Uh, and we're going to head to the west of that, to the Rose Church, where we're going to farm Blood Roses. Uh, we're also going to need to come back here later on for Vare's questline, uh, so we can get the Somber Stone 10 to max out the Sword of Night and Flame. But this is the best place in the early game to farm Blood Roses. From the Fallen Ruins side of Grace, you can run over to the church, grab all eight Blood Roses, and then run away from the Sanguine Noble before he kills you, and you can go back to the side of Grace, rest at it, and the Blood Roses respawn, and that's where you can farm Blood Roses in the early game. Anyway, so I went and gave the necklace back to Raya, and she gives us the uh, Volcano Manor invitation, which we're going to need in a little bit. And then finally, the last gazebo we're going to is just to the southeast of the Academy Gate Town. It has the last Smithing Stone 3s that we need, so we now have 12 each of 1, 2s, and 3s to upgrade the Uji Katana to plus 9. Also, while we're in the gate town, we're going to grab this golden seed that's here. It's just to the northeast of the Finger Reader Crone, as you can see on the map here. Um, so make sure you grab that, because it's going to come in handy. And then we're going to go back to EG, or to Hugh and the Roundtable Hold, 
and upgrade the Uchi Katana to plus 9. That's sufficient for killing the Godskin Noble. I am going to point out where to get Smithing Stone 4s to bring it up to plus 12 in a minute. Uh, so after that, now it's time to leave Lyurnia and go up to the Altus Plateau. So from the main Carrier Manor Gate, we're going to head to the east, and there's a big rock that sticks out over this ravine, and we're going to use that to get up to the Bellum Church. Along the way, there's this little pond, and there's an invisible scarab running around. It's actually huge, so if you randomly throw throwing knives at it, you might hit it, and it gives you the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War. Um, it's not going to be used in this guide, but it's nice to get. Um, that's where a golden seed is, so if you follow the ravine to the north, um, there's a golden seed there. And in this tunnel, the Ruinstune Precipice, you can get, I think, 11 Smithing Stone 4s. And so plus the one that we picked up from Caria Manor, that's enough to bring the Uchi Katana up to plus 12, if you want. Anyway, I didn't go north up the ravine, I instead went to the south, up the hill, and that takes us to the Bellum Church. And then from there, we're gonna go onto the Bellum Highway, and followed up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. So you don't want to go onto the actual road of the highway. You want to follow this cliff instead. Because if you go on the road, then there's a bunch of trebuchets that are going to shoot at you and they'll kill you. If you follow the cliff, then they can't shoot at you. Grab the Sight of Grace before the Grand Lift of Dectus. And then we're going to take the lift up to the Altus Plateau. Now, if you go up to the Altus Plateau, there's a few things in the southern part of the map that change. The main one being that Red Main Castle, um, where you can pick up a few items goes into the Radon Festival mode, and you can't get those items until you kill Radon and make it exit Festival mode. So keep that in mind um, if you want to go up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. There's a couple items that you won't be able to get until you kill Radon if you come up here. Anyway, so at the Altus Plateau, um, you saw Raya was there. We're not going to talk to her yet. Instead, go north, grab the Set of Grace because we're going to have to come back here later, uh, and then you can go talk to Raya at the lift. Raya will offer to take you to Volcano Manor, so that's where we need to go, that's what we're gonna do, so take her hand. That is now two girls' hands that my character has held. <laughs> anyway, so at the Volcano Manor, grab the Sight of Grace, and then talk to Tanith. She will give you the drawing room key, so that you can unlock the doors in the hallway. We're gonna go to the first one on the right. This is where we need the lantern for, because it's really dark in here, so make sure you have that. There's an illusory wall in the corner, just roll into it and it disappears. And then we're just going to go straight ahead through this dungeon. Just follow the road straight. Be careful of the Bloodhound Knight um, that might kick your ass. But no, there's a set of grace right here. And then through the doors, you will see the Temple of Aigle. So that's where we need to go. We're going to take a shortcut through the prison town to get there. Obviously, you should, you know, come back and explore this stuff at some point. But for now, we're just worried about getting this sword maxed out. So you can drop down onto this roof here and then drop down onto the lower part of the cliff. If you land in the right spot, you don't take fall damage. There are enemies down here that can attack you, so you want to be quick. Um, but if you come over here onto this wall and jump down into the lava, the lava slows you down and makes you fat roll, and it does a bunch of damage to you every couple seconds. So make sure you have enough health to be able to survive this. I had to use like three or four flasks to not get owned here. Uh, but make your way through the lava. It's slightly faster if you roll. And then once we come to the staircase, first we're going to head to the right over here, and we're going to come on top of this roof and grab the Somberstone 6. Uh, and then we're going to go up the staircase towards the temple. There's a Mant Serpent with a whip here that will probably kick your ass. So try to sneak past it if you can. Then take the elevator up towards the temple. On your right, there is a corpse with a Somberstone 5. So we're going to grab that. So we can now upgrade the Sword of Night and Flame to plus 6. And then we're going to go up the staircase. Instead of going into the temple, go left. And we're going to activate the Shortcut Bridge. That can take us back to the prison town church site of Greece, where we're going to prepare for the fight with the Godskin Noble. So we grabbed five cracked pots. That should be more than enough for fighting the Noble. Um, you're also going to want to make some blood grease. Uh, you can farm the materials, like I said, at the Rose Church and at the War Master Shack. You're also going to want to make sure you upgraded your flasks using the materials we picked up along the way. And you're going to want at least two blue flasks because we're going to be using the Unsheathed Ash of War, which uses a bunch of FP, and Sleep Pots also cost FP. In the Wondrous Physic, I use the Strength tier to boost my uh, Uchi Katana damage, and the Spiked Crack tier in case we do charged attacks. Uh, you're going to need the Uchi Katana with the Unsheathed Ash of War, which it has by default, and then you need any other weapon. Um, I had the club, so that's what I used, and you can put Golden Vow on that, which we're going to use to buff before we fight the Godskin Noble. So make sure you have that Golden Vow weapon equipped somewhere, and the Uchi Katana, and then you can switch to it, 
cast Golden Vow for the buff. I think it lasts for 80 seconds, uh, and then you can switch over to the Katana and use that against the Noble. Make sure you have Blood Grease equipped somewhere. I like to put it on my pouch so I don't have to switch to it on my hotbar to put it on the uh, Uchi Katana. And make sure you have your Sleep Pots equipped. When you walk into the temple for the first time, the Godskin doesn't immediately spawn. So you can go up by like, I think the second or third row of pews before he spawns. So drink your Physic, cast Golden Vow, and then drink a blue flask and switch over to the Uchi Katana and put Blood Grease on it. We're using Blood Grease because the Godskin is really weak to bleed. When you run up toward the altar, the Godskin will spawn in, dodge whatever attack he does, and throw a Sleep Pot at his feet. Um, I recommend you do it not locked on, just aim at his feet and throw it at his feet. And then, while he's in the falling asleep animation, you want to attack him with three unsheathes. And then I did a charge attack, I should have done the repost. Um, you're gonna see me die here because of that mistake. Um, yeah. So, the three unsheathes will break his stance, and then, uh, you can do a repost, and you'll see how that works out in a second. So, now that he's already been spawned in, I had to go through a fog wall, and he'll already be there, but it's the same buffing procedure. Just cast Golden Vow, drink a blue flask, put bleed, or blood grease on the Uchi Katana. When you run inside the temple, um, for some reason he was stuck in place there for me, so he may or may not do that for you, but again, just dodge whatever attack he does, and then while he's in the recovery animation for that attack, you want to hit him with the sleep pot, um, because that makes it safe to throw the sleep pot. Then, as he's falling asleep, and while he's asleep, hit him with three unsheathes, and that will break his stance, then do the repost, and while he's waking up from the repost, hit him with another sleep pot. That'll immediately put him to sleep, and you saw how I didn't attack him until he started his falling asleep animation. If you attack him before he starts the falling asleep animation, then he will instantly wake up and he won't go to sleep at all, and he'll just keep attacking you like normal. Um, you're gonna see here I got owned by his roll, so there's a way to prevent that from happening, which we're gonna do in this next part of the run. So, do all the buffs, go in, dodge the attack, hit him with a sleep pot, wait for him to finish whatever animation he's doing, and then start doing his falling asleep animation, then attack him with three unsheaths, hit him with the repost, he's already down to uh, low enough health to go into phase two, hit him with another sleep pot while he's doing his phase two transition, wait until he starts falling asleep again, then hit him with the unsheathes. I had to drink a blue flask, but he stays asleep for a while, so we have enough time to uh, drink that flask before he uh, wakes up. Now that he's done his phase two transition, he's gonna immediately attack. If you stay close to him, he'll do this attack instead of his pinwheel attack, and that way, um, you can dodge the atomic ash drop more easily than his uh, rolling attack. You see here, he's purple, like he's asleep, but I'm waiting for him to start the falling asleep animation before I attack. Once he starts doing that animation, that's when it's safe to attack. If I had attacked him before then, then he wouldn't fall asleep at all, and it would have just been a complete waste of a sleep pot. So wait until he starts the sleep animation. But yeah, so as long as you don't fuck it up like I did the first two times, it's a pretty easy fight if you had the Sleep Pots and the Uchi Katana with the Blood Grease. He's really weak to Slash, which the Uchi does, and he's really weak to Bleed, so, you know, that just works out. Uh, he drops 50,000 runes on death, so I use that to bring my stats up to the minimum stats for the Sword of Night and Flame, which is 12 Strength, 12 Dex, 24 Int, and 24 Faith. I strongly recommend you also go farm some runes and put a bunch of points into Vigor, because that will help you a lot, trust me. Anyway, with the Noble dead, we can now head into the later stages of Volcano Manor, where we're gonna go grab the Somberstone 7. So, be careful of this Virgin Abductor, because its fucking blades can go through the, the walls there and kill you. Anyway, so once you get past this thing without getting owned, we're gonna head up into another room that has an elevator that's a shortcut back down to the Temple of Igle so you don't have to run past the Virgin Abductor. So this is that elevator. Um, there's a side door that leads out of the temple that leads to the thing that has the elevator there. After the shortcut room, there's this little bridge. If you come to the left side of it and look down, you'll see there's a little bit of cliff that you can jump down onto. So jump down into that and go through the window. There's a commoner in here that you can test out your Sword of Night and Flame on. Fuck you. And then on this corpse nearby, there is a Stone Sword key. So this is the second one. Like I said earlier, we need two total, so we picked up the first one at the Stormhill Shack. So make sure you have two, because there's no Sights of Grace over here, and you're going to have to do this whole run again. Um, and then you saw I stayed close to that pillar there, 
and that way the Man Serpent's Magma Whip didn't hit me. And then you saw after those doors, there was a staircase behind us that takes us up to this Stone Sword Key door. Go through it and that takes you to the Sex Dungeon. And instead of jumping onto the cages, if you stand on that candle there, you can just walk uh, towards the archway and that brings you down to this little platform. And then you can come up through this room, past the Elbenaric, and grab the Dagger Talisman, uh, which is just nice to have, something that's easy to miss. And then you can jump down the cages from here. So before you jump down to the ground level, um, you're going to want to orient yourself towards the west side of the room. There's a bunch of Albanorics down there, um, and if they grab you, uh, it'll probably kill you because they do a ton of damage. So we're heading out the west side of this room. Jump down to the smaller cage that's on the floor. You won't take damage if you land on this cage, and then be ready to run past all the Albanorics. Again, we're going to the west, then make a left, go up the stairs. Past the Abductor Virgin, there is a Somber Stone 7, so we can now bring the Sword of Night and Flame up to plus 7. And then after that, we're going to Fort Faroth, because we need to go to the Divine Tower of Kaled in the Dragon Barrow. So from Fort Faroth, you can see the road. If you head to the west, there's the map, and the Divine Tower of Kaled is just to the north of the map. So use that as your orientation, grab that map, then head up the hill towards the tower, there's a scarab up here that when we kill it, it drops a somber stone eight. It also explodes on death, so be careful of that. Once you've got the somber stone eight, we're going to head to the southeast, down the hill, and then down the second hill. And that will take us underneath the divine tower, uh, where there is a circle of chairs that has a somber smithing stone nine on it. So that's this bad boy right here. And now we can bring the Sword of Night and Flame up to plus 9, which is very nice. So this only took me about an hour and a half to do. Um, I'm sure following the guide, you can do it in a pretty similar time. And if this is the beginning of your playthrough, then a plus 9 somber weapon uh, is going to be super strong for you. Now, like I said in the intro, um, you know, it does decent damage on melee, but it's not as good as something that does just one or two types of damage. Um, what makes this weapon strong is the Ashes of War. Um, I especially like the fire one because it can hit a whole bunch of different targets at once, and it just does so much damage. It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, we came here to get a plus 10 sort of Night and Flame, so uh, we need to do Vare's quest line. Vare wants us to kill a demigod, so I went for the easiest one, which is Godric. So first you need to kill Margit. Uh, he shouldn't be too much trouble for you with this thing. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I recommend the fire. It's just easier to hit, and I think it does more poise damage, though I don't know the exact numbers on it. Um, but I feel like it does more poise damage than the Comet Azor. After you kill Margit, you'll be able to go into Stormvale. If I did a walkthrough for that, it would take another two hours in this video, so I just skipped to the Godric fight. Um, with this sword, you shouldn't have very much trouble getting through Stormvale at all. And the same thing with Godric, just blast him with that fire. Um, you can also use the Comet Azur if you want, but I prefer the fire. Once you kill Godric, you have to go to the round table hold and talk to Enya and the Two Fingers. And after you've spoken to her, you can head over to the Rose Church, where White Mask Vare will be waiting for you. Talk to him, and he will give you five festering bloody fingers. You can either invade three players, or there's an NPC we can kill up in the Altus Plateau. So that's what we're going to do instead. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to show the path to him on the map instead of actually walking there on video. So from the Grand Lift of Dectus, we grab the Altus Plateau Site of Grace. You can follow the road to the north. There is a, a Site of Grace at the junction, so make sure you grab that. Right next to the Site of Grace, there's a Golden Seed, so make sure you grab that. And then just follow the road to the north. The map is right about here. And then after that, you can keep following it north to the Broken Bridge, where the Finger Reader Crone is. There's also a Merchant there. Grab the Site of Grace, and there's a Teleporter. That teleporter takes you to the other end of the broken bridge, on top of the bridge, not where, the, not where this side of grace is. Then, from there, head around to the west, and you'll come to these tombstones on this cliff here. You can use those to safely get down to the lower level, and then there's a side of grace underneath the archway of the bridge there. And then you can follow the road to the south, and that takes you to the Blood Ruins, where we need to go to kill Magnus the Beast Claw. 
There's a bunch of bleed dogs around here, so be careful, but you'll see the red invasion sign on the ground. You can use that to invade Magnus. He should be a pushover with the sword, but he can do a decent amount of damage if he hits you. Um, in fact, we're going to trade an attack here, and you can see he leaves me with like one health at the end of this fight. Uh, so be careful not to get owned by him like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I prefer the fire because it's just easier to hit with instead of having a single beam. It's just a big wide wave of fire. So that's what I use to kill him. After you kill him, go back to Vare and he will give you the Lord of Blood's favor. He wants you to soak it in a maiden's blood. Unfortunately, we are maidenless. So instead, we're going to head up the Craigslist personals and we're going to find a maiden to get blood from. Uh, she is located at the Four Belfries in Liurnia. You can get there just by following the road south from the King's Realm Ruins, where uh, EG is located. There's a soldier camp here at this uh, junction, so be careful not to get murdered by them. Um, there's also a set of grace further down the road, but uh, I didn't bother to grab that. We need to go to the top belfry to get the imbued sword key. There's also a set of grace up here, so make sure you grab it in case you die to the boss that we have to kill in a second. There are two other imbued sword keys, but uh, they're kind of a bitch to get, so make sure you don't accidentally waste this one. We're going to use it to go to the Precipice of Anticipation, so use it to activate the uh, teleporter with the stone sword, key, imp, statue, whatever you want to fucking call it. Take the teleporter, that takes you back to the Chapel of Anticipation at the start of the game. The Graph to Scion is waiting for us. I hit it with a sleep pot just to see what would happen. Uh, don't waste your sleep pots on it. Uh, and then just two Ashes of War will kill it. And then go up to the church where we started the game, and our dead maiden is here. We're going to dye the cloth with her blood. And then we are going to take the Lord of Blood's favor back to Vare and give it to him. Talk to him, offer finger, and he will give you the bloody finger, which you can use to invade people. And then talk to him again, and he'll give you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. You can use that from your inventory to go to Mogwin Palace, which is where we need to go for the final uh, Somber Smithing Stone. So where you spawn in, just head up the steps, and you're just running all the way to the top of Mogwan Palace. Um, this is a pretty high-level area, so I recommend you level up your Vigor a bunch. Um, if you get hit by any of these enemies, they'll probably one-shot you, um, especially in here, in this dark temple, where there are Sanguine Nobles that spawn. Um, they'll chase after you, and they also throw daggers at you, which is why I'm doing a Serpentine pattern here. Uh, so try not to get owned. Um... But yeah, grab the set of grace, and then we're going up to this area where there's a bunch of albinarics and another sanguine noble. I like to stand on top of this, and you see there's a pillar beyond my head. If you line yourself up, um, you have to aim higher than I was aiming there. Um, if you throw a throwing dagger at the pillar, the noise will attract the sanguine noble, and you can run up to this chest and grab the smithing stone out of it without him attacking you. Um, but I fucked it up and just drew his attention toward me, but it worked out either way. Anyway, bring that shit back to EG. Level up the Sword of Night and Flame, and congratulations, you have a Sword of Night and Flame plus 10. This only took me about two hours to do, so if you're following this guide, uh, you can get it pretty quick. Uh, I recommend you level up only one of the stats, so bring it up to its like minimum requirements of 24 Intelligence, 24 Faith, and then I recommend you use it as a single stat weapon, um, preferably the Faith, because that's what the fire scales with, the Fire Ash of War, um, because that does a ton of damage. The Fire Ash of War doesn't scale with your Intelligence, and the Comet Azor doesn't scale with your Faith. Um, so it's better if you just level up one stat and use that as the focus of your damage. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or feedback, and I'll catch you later.